Good afternoon. This is week two of Social Work 636. So to begin, as always, looking at the introduction and learning resources for this week, let's go over the learning objectives. The learning objectives for this week are to describe alternate sources of funding for social services, describe sources of grant funding, describe the concept of unmet need and methods to assess need, and then to write a statement of need. There are quite a few readings for this week. I would suggest reading the three chapters in Kettner, Maroney, and Martin first. I think they put this week's discussion into context and then go to the Brody and Nair chapters on managing finances, resource development, preparing effective proposals, and seeking funding. There are two websites. Well, let's back up. There is first a, a website that gives a number of tips for fundraising, which I think is important. I've actually passed that on to others. And then two websites that may help you when you're in the process of looking for funding to fund your proposal. Proposals, but sometimes just a Google search with some keywords will also come up with funding opportunities. There are two assignments this week. One is your discussion post. And so for your first discussion post, it's around identifying unmet need. So this week's discussion asks you to reflect on a social work organization or a social work setting within an organization and to identify unmet needs. In order to do that, you're going to choose an organization, and I would encourage you to, to use the same organization you worked on in week one unless you have developed some problem. So you will name that organization, describe its size, age, location, and whether it's a nonprofit or for profit, and in complete sentences answer the following. You want to talk about organizational culture and how do you determine organizational culture? Well, how do you feel when you walk in? What about the organization or climate contributes to this feeling? What do you notice about staff? How do they treat one another and how do they treat clients? Is the atmosphere collegial, hostile, welcoming, suspicious? What do you notice? Who are the organization's clients and consumers? To the best of your knowledge, what are their primary needs? What needs is the agency meeting well? And what remains as an unmet need? Given the evidence you have reflected upon, identify three unmet needs faced by your organization and provide a one to two sentence description of each unmet need. So in your response, this week you will have a different partner than week one. I will be posting your new partners, so wait for that announcement. You're going to respond looking at your partner's initial post to the following. Which of the three unmet needs identified by your week two partner do you think could best be addressed through a program change or through the introduction of a new program? What idea, ideas can you give your partner about that program change or new program? Give them at least two ideas. Your initial post is due Thursday and your follow-up post is due between Friday and Sunday. Your next assignment for the week is your first written assignment. And so you want to go to the section that describes this organizational capacity assessment. And we'll wait for that to load. This is due week two. So the overview, it's connected to your final proposal. 
your task is to examine the organization for which you will write that the eventual program grant proposal and determine the capacity of the organization to seek new funding to expand its services through a grant. This describes again the organization you should choose, the sources you can use, and the format. This is a paper, so use headings so you make sure you don't leave anything out. The instructions say to not include an introduct introduction or conclusion. Answer each question in complete sentences. I would give a guideline to you of three to four pages for this paper. Use data rather than opinions, although there is one question with two sec sections that ask for your opinion, but make sure it's an informed opinion. This is a paper, so you should use citations. You should utilize readings, um, citations from your readings for this week, although you could always use outside citations. Remember to follow APA format, good grammar, and sentence structure. Again, this is a paper. So the four sections ask you to describe this organization, to look at its existing structure and services. Section three is its relationship to the environment and section four is the analysis. This is the rubric. It is worth 50 points. So again, I would say take a good deal of effort and, and really review and make sure that not only have you answered all the questions, but you have done so in a grammatically correct fashion using APA formatting. So for this week, you again had a number of readings. And my logic has organized those readings as follows. First, thinking about what is the problem and the needs that should be addressed. One of the ways organizations address needs is through writing a proposal to seek funding. How do you know that what you have identified as a need problem is going to benefit clients, not what you think the need is or the organization thinks the need is, but what is the actual need? We utilize a methodology called a needs assessment to determine what the needs are of the clients that the organization is called to serve. So you can do this by looking at demographic data. You can talk to constituent groups, for example, through focus groups. You can do survey research, which is often more expensive. You can these days use social media and surveys, online surveys like SurveyMonkey to determine the actual need of an organization. Out of those needs, we develop our broad-based goals, and this is what we aspire to. From those goals, we determine objectives, and objectives are measurable. They are clearly the steps that we are going to take to meet those needs. We often describe objectives as needing to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time phase. And when we get to that section of the proposal, I will comment a lot about whether your objectives meet the SMART criteria. Next, in terms of the flow of writing a proposal, we look often at a logic model. Many of the grants now require the construction of a logic model. Logically, this helps us look at how things should proceed in order for us to reach our objectives. And so we are looking at an analysis from input to impact. How will we reach our objectives of meeting those unmet needs? And this includes looking at input, processes, outputs, outcome, and ultimately the impact. 
in proposals we we write in proposals we need to determine an evaluation strategy to measure whether we've met those objectives and reached that unmet need. For all organizations, evaluation is key for existing programs and for new programs, especially now in terms of our evidence-based practice and for accountability. We evaluate not only for effectiveness, how well we are doing, but efficiency, how well we are using our resources. So moving next to the area of budget, which was several of the chapters. Social workers as managers must understand the budget process. We must know how dollars and cents work in our organization as we may be the ones to manage program budgets. We have to understand both the operational expenses, but also specific program expenses, which also includes personnel costs, which is the majority cost for any budget in an organization. We also have to look at fundraising and fundraising expenses. How to, it costs money to raise money in an organization. In that budget process, we have to know where our money is going to come from to run the organization and a specific program. For example, it, if it is all grant money, what happens when the grant goes away? We have to plan for program sustainability. How much is going to be donor solicitation? How many fundraisers are we going to have in a year? Does the organization participate in plan giving, talking to people in the community about leaving money to the organization in their wills, for example? Organizational budgets are comprised of many sources of funding, though so it can be grant funding, could be donor solicitations, can be plan giving, a number fundraisers, a number of sources in order to meet the unmet needs of the organization. Strategic planning was also talked about in the readings, and this allows us to strategically look at an organization. We can do it three to five years out, which is a more long range plan. Some plans have goals that are one to three years, which includes then both short term, long term goals and objectives. Strategic plans should be working documents. That is, they shouldn't be put on the shelf and pulled out at the end of the strategic plan. And they could also be tied to the annual evaluation of the organization's CEO. In going through a strategic planning process, we often talk about a SWOT analysis, and that is looking at strengths, organizational weaknesses, what are the opportunities, and what are the organizational threats. We can come out with new goals and objectives, new ideas for looking at funding, new programs and services, because clients' needs continue to evolve. So if you have a question on your assignments for this week, please email me as soon as possible. And I look forward to reviewing both your initial post and your first written assignment for the week.